In this Georgia community, the winter air brings another season. I wouldn't be able to give my heart to nobody else because he is my life. Another season for Christy Woodall, who's been searching for justice. Because I know Buddy didn't do that. It is September 4th, 2000, Labor Day. Lavelle Lynn, a tow truck operator, and his mechanic, Robert Van Allen, were murdered. Prosecutors described it as an ambush-style attack. The motive? Robbery. Lynn had $490 in cash. Is Buddy here? No, sir. In the confession tapes, Netflix examines the Georgia killings and the conviction of Buddy Woodall. Fear overrides everything. Fear will shut your body down. The hour-long documentary reveals there were more than 35 suspects and a small chain of circumstantial evidence, but it creates doubt about the veracity of Buddy Woodall's videotape confession. I was upset. I know what kind of person Buddy is, and my heart just broke for him. It really did. Woodall was interrogated throughout the night into the wee hours of the morning. He didn't know he was being interrogated. It was just to answer some questions. In 2005, Woodall was convicted and sentenced to three life sentences in Georgia's Telfair State Prison. When I got home about 6.30 that night, Walt Lanier and Jay Wiggins gets out of the car. I want to ask you some questions about uh, your uncle's murder. They told me all they wanted to do was talk about him and not to worry about it, that he would be home. So I took him, took him at the word. They were police officers. Buddy Woodall waived his rights. He apparently believed he would answer a few questions and return home. And Buddy kept asking him if he could leave, and they told him no. But Woodall and his brother-in-law had become suspects in his uncle's murder. I just think I'm a scapegoat for this. They needed a conviction. They got one. Around 4.30 a.m., 10 hours into the interrogation, Woodall placed himself at the scene of the crime. Whenever I told them that story, that was a lie. I just wanted it to end. I just wanted to go home. The confession is fake. Yes, sir. It's coerced. Defense attorney Ann Fennell is not associated with the Woodall case. She spoke with me about confessions in general. Fennell says law enforcement is trained in the read technique, an interrogation method that can elicit false confessions. It's designed to get people to make admissions to things that, that, that aren't necessarily true. Well, most people say, you know, I would never confess. I would never, I would never confess to something I didn't do. But the bottom line is, is that people do confess. Some people just want to go home and they think, well, I'll give the police, you know, what they want to hear and my, let my lawyer sort it out. And I can't tell you the number of times I've gone to the jail and the, a person has said exactly that to me. In 2014, Buddy Woodall appealed to the Georgia Supreme Court. He wrote his confession was involuntarily made, it was induced, it should have been excluded from the trial. The Georgia Supreme Court denied his appeal. I tell our boys all the time, if it doesn't matter what you get questioned for, you don't say nothing, you always ask for an attorney. I have no faith in the judicial system from this. Honestly, I do not. This January, Christy Woodall celebrated her 21st wedding anniversary alone. Her hope is the Netflix documentary will get them legal help before another winter comes and goes. I'm hoping it'll bring my husband home. What's next? Chrissy Woodall says her husband recently filed his final appeal himself. If it fails, they plan to contact the Innocence Project for help. Canamero, First Coast News, on your side.